of May, May 6th. Uh, it is Coach Dan, and from far to front, we've got Coach Ryan, we've got Coach Josh, and we have got our guest today. He has been with us for about, what would you say, four or five months? Nine or ten. Nine or ten? Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God, you've been around that long. Half. Wow. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce everyone to Chris. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hang on, let's just do something. Let's all try to say Chris's last name. You go first. Mastin Anuno. <laughs> Mast Antuono. Perfect. I was going to say Mastin. Just stop. He got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't do it well? Uh, no, sir. Oh. You, you, you didn't add also the, the, the um? Italian. Yeah. Oh. The um. I was going to go more Hawaiian. Oh. Okay. <laughs> why? Because <laughs> he looks at it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, why don't you start by introducing yourself. Um, how long you've been a part of the gym and just like the beginning of your journey up until now. Okay, so Chris Mast, uh, I own the car shop down the street. I came in here last June. Um, I've actually been on Coffee Talk once before. Um, where does the journey start? The journey starts with you walk in. Actually, I, I was going to the protein shake place down the street, and I almost got run over a few times on people <laughs> doing Zao runs. And so... <laughs> It made me look, and it made me look a couple of times, and then I finally had the courage to walk in and talk to you guys. And what does the courage come from? What, like, why do you mean? What do you mean, courage? What do you mean, courage? I, it, I mean, just that simple. You know, walking into new environments, walking into situations of discomfort. Um, sometimes you need a little push, a little motivation, a little something that that's not there. What was something that you were thinking of? Because you said you came through here a couple times and checked it out. Like, what were your initial thoughts when you walked by and saw these people almost running you over at the protein shake place? So I thought that part was cool. And then when I went on the website and I saw the sleds, I thought that was really cool because it wasn't a typical um, box gym. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what kind of gave me the, the want to walk in the door. Oh, the coolness. Cool. Everybody come to our gym because it's really cool. It's cool. Yes. Yeah. The gym. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Good new, new commercial. Um, what was the biggest fear when you walked in? What do you think? Um, I don't know that if uh, I don't know that I could isolate a specific fear, but um, you know, you're 45 years old, you're 300 pounds, and just you know, you you walking into a gym, any type of environment like that you have to face your insecurities. What were some of the insecurities that you found yourself <clears throat> experiencing before you came in? You know, that, the, the, like, that led you yeah. to come in? Well, you're 45 years old and you're 300 pounds. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big one. But there's got to be also, what you happens know. happens if you're 44 and 290? Well, then maybe you got another year and 10 pounds to go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know? <clears throat> but there was obviously some sort of, um, maybe it was like a, day thing you're trying to run around with your kids maybe that you were like i kind of need to change something now for the better to I, ensure like a longer i wish i had that aha moment um but i was stagnant for a while so there wasn't really that like that that moment yeah unfortunately that that part just didn't exist what was your history before with let's say exercise if you had a trainer or anything high school sports okay um weightlifting um but that's 30 years now, so yeah. that's, that's, that's a minute. Can we side note to the best aha moment that we've ever had? <laughs> yeah, I would still like to say that the fact that I could not hang, hang upside down anymore, I couldn't, I couldn't put my hooks on a pole and hang upside down was the moment I realized I needed to get fit, and I'm just sitting here, and as we're talking about it, I'm thinking about Chris putting on hooks, trying to get upside down in his doorway, <laughs> straightening his back. Shout out to Kayla Hurley. Um, okay, Chris, let's talk about your journey so far. You started, um, talk about the first week, the first month. What experiences did you go through? Was it fun? Did you enjoy your company with Josh? Because I know that's who you worked with when we first kind of introduced you to the cool spot of the gym. Um, yes, to, to, to Okay, all of it. good answer. Um, yes. I, I kind of agree. Yes. Um, so walking in, yeah, you hooked me up with Josh uh, right away. We had a good rapport, good relationship. At this point, I've trained with all three of you, so I have a, probably a different perspective than a lot of the people here. Um, Josh was great, is great. Um, was. Help, well, <laughs> used to be great, now yeah. he's okay. Um, you know, my journey's been a little bit, a little bit 
pr it's probably normal. It's not the ideal journey from my perspective. I'm down about 35 pounds. That hasn't really changed a ton um, in the last bunch of months. Um, I haven't been super great with diet and alcohol and that sort of stuff, uh, but I have maintained uh, my commitment to being here um, and exercising outside of here. So that part's been good. It's also been a good education piece for me that um, you don't have to do it all at once. I should do it all at once. I should be in a, a further alone than I am, but I'm further alone than I was when I started, and I'm a lot fitter today than when I started. I remember saying to Josh early on that I wanted to be more explosive, um, oh and I'm definitely that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, For you guys that didn't see, I got a middle finger behind <laughs> Josh's back. I was deserved it. To you, buddy. Um, okay. So, uh, so yeah. So what else? NFL Combine call you anytime soon for that explosiveness? <laughs> <laughs> I said my history was high school football. I okay, I didn't know. I just said it a minute ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, getting a chance to work with you, and you know, obviously all cards are on the table. You know, you had your starting point where it was pretty difficult. Did you you face discouragement from time to time? I still face discouragement. I had okay. a bad week here this yeah. week. Okay, but uh. what's like that one thing that now keeps you going? Because you know, not every single workout's going to be like that. You know, your progress isn't linear. What do you tell yourself to continue moving forward or to come back and handle all of us? I guess <laughs> that's a good way to that's a good way to put it. Um, I just I feel like you guys are committed to us or me, and so I'm committed to you guys. Um, I think that had I been at a at a box gym, it probably wouldn't have been still exercising. I think I definitely would have fallen off. I got injured for a little bit, six eight weeks. I wasn't really working out. You guys were reaching out. Um, you know that's kind of cool, and you know making sure everything everything is good and staying focused at least on what we can stay focused on. Um, and the community here is great. Hey, let's go down the, the panel here, um, since we've all had a chance to work with Chris. Let's talk about what you've seen from him while you worked with him. And this is kind of like good, bad, and ugly. Um, we do have extra Crisco for your big ass head, so we can get out the door. <laughs> but before you leave today. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. Let's give an eye roll, too, while we're at it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so everybody, before that, you uh, before you talk good stuff about Chris, I want you guys to give an eye roll like you've seen from him. Okay, let's see who's got the best one. <laughs> Viewer's choice. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, man, you're doing good. Keep it up, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Followed usually by a very explicit word, but since Mom is probably watching, I'm not going to say it. There you go. Um. So working with Chris on my end when he started coming to classes after working with Josh, it's it's a big step going from like a half hour to an hour setting. And especially with some of the classes like leg day this week was was brutal, a lot of people would say. And some, yes. some days it can be. But regardless of how shitty the situation was, Chris would step back, take a break, kind of like talk to himself and then come back into it at whatever point he left off. It wasn't like he just did it hit the wall and then walked away so his determination in that factor coming from josh going from a half hour one-on-ones to to the hour class for me was was great to see he did hours he did hours yeah. oh, I, I know he's correct <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> right. you're welcome thank you <laughs> josh you're up <laughs> that was a yeah, good, was one. A good one right? yeah, yeah, yeah. um i firsthand got to see chris from day one up until now so yeah like you said maybe 10 months so to get you to to see you only be able to complete like a couple rounds for like an hour workout, you know, taking your time in between. Um, kind of glad, I guess, I got sick for that week because I think that was something that really pushed you forward to, you know, take that class or take a chance 100%, 100%. to. 100%. Like, you wouldn't have probably would, for I a little bit. I would have done the classes yeah. at that point um, had you not gotten class. So to see like day one up until then and like that push forward has been drastic. Um, one, just obviously the attitude about exercise or just the attitude about coming into the gym. Um, like I say, I always love seeing uh, that initial time that somebody walks into the gym. Obviously, it's very intimidating for everybody. So you kind of see that their shoulders are rolled forward, like they're kind of hiding a bit. Um, but to now see you walk in just, you know, high and mighty, kind of a Gregor walk, 
sunglasses on, just saying yeah. hey to everybody. You know, it's a, it's a good McGregor. sign, though. But right, it's, um, I like it. <laughs> it's confidence, obviously. It's the confidence that you built within the gym, but within yourself as well, and that reflects on your work. I got to see this Conor McGregor walk by the time he leaves. Today. <laughs> you don't okay. see he walks in I'd get it. with the glasses, <laughs> yeah. too. Um, hang on. So I'll go my eye roll first. <laughs> and, like, the head goes along with the it. The blue pole is right there, too, because he's hanging on yeah. it. <laughs> like, you can say, like, great job, or you could say, like, hey, that was half-assed, and he'd give you whatever. Um, my experience, I've done a few one-on-ones with Chris. Um I've had a better relationship with him outside of the gym than inside of the gym. And I think one of the things that people won't understand is, yes, he does sweat more than the average human being. And it's actually (laughs) disgusting. And he came up to us yesterday and was like, nobody sweats here. (laughs) No, nobody gets out of a baby pool and and then walks around our entire gym with a wet shirt. And we have tracks of wherever Chris has been. So we went over to the bench press the other day. Chris was sitting down. Oh, we knew because he was right there. Um, I've seen Chris's um, determination but genuine compassion to help other people, not even just people in the gym. But, um, Chris, I would like you to talk about this, too, because I think it comes back full circle. you got to give to get. Um, Chris found out that we were doing you know, the donations for Thanksgiving, our community here, we, we donated to like 25 families, and Chris helped out with that. And then in Christmas, um, what did we do? We uh, split like, it. Like 40 or something? No, you did 25. I did 25, so it was 50. 50. Okay. Yeah, so he personally delivered to 25 houses. We did 25 houses. Um, I think that, for me, is probably one of the best things that I've seen out of him, regardless of if he's ran – you know, uh, a 5K, 10K, because we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Chris, where does that come from, that compassion, that that uh, that need to want to help others? I don't really know the answer to that either. Um, Hang on, let's just talk about a sweating right now. I am. I sweat. <laughs> it's he's, just the he's, gym. He's very stiff. It's just in the, the mic. gym. <laughs> it's hot in here. It makes I me, wish Dan would. It makes me, I'm thinking of burpees. I'm just thinking I know thinking what you're about to say. I wish so. Dan would take his vest off. <laughs> You got Danny DeVito and Arnold oh. Schwarzenegger here. There we go. <laughs> Twins. Good. Okay. Great stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I moved here from Long Island eight or ten years ago and started a business, and the community has really supported us, so uh, I wanted to kind of support the community back. Um, so we started helping with the mission, and then finding out about what you guys do, we, we kind of tried to uh, jump on that a little bit. Just help out where we can. Yeah. That's it. Did that stem from when you were younger? Did it stem from like, hey, I just want to move here and make a name or what? Um, no, it just, I don't really have an answer for that. It just kind of happened. I guess it's innate, but it, I didn't learn about it until in my 40s. Yeah. Maybe when I was able to. How does it make you feel the understanding that we fed like over 100 people? Oh, it's awesome. It was awesome. more than 100 people. It was like 175 yeah, but, or something crazy. But, well, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, the stuff we did at the mission and the stuff that we did together, we definitely fed like probably 400 people. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. It is cool. That is yeah, awesome. No doubt. Um, talk about the journey of, okay, well, we lost a bunch of weight. And we, then, lost, we lost a bunch of weight. Um, my and sentence and wasn't done. Losing weight. <laughs> my sentence wasn't done. <laughs> sorry. And sorry. this isn't your show. <laughs> what's, the, what's the name of the program today? <laughs> it's Christmas time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get your present at the end. Um, I want to talk about how you kind of unlocked some potential, and all of a sudden, like you started to do some hard stuff, like you ran a 5K, right? Never thought that you would turkey wobble, wobble, wobble. Not only never thought that I would. It's it's funny looking back on it because I was scared shitless to do it. Yeah. Um, so walk us through the process of like, okay, did 5K, then what was then, then what was next, what was next? Like, because you've done a bunch of shit. Yeah, so when I did the 5K, I then signed up for a 10K and a five-mile thing and then a Spartan race, and now I have a duathlon in a few weeks that I'm totally not prepared for. Um, just just start putting stuff on the calendar and doing it. I come in last place all the time, but I don't care. But why did you do it? Um because I could. These are great answers. <laughs> what do you want these me to are, tell these you? These are great answers. 
They're just like answer period. <laughs> answer period. Like, like you, you give us son or daughter to go coming off. home. Yeah. How was school? Good. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you learn? Join my kids' class. You you'll fit in very well. <laughs> Good. It'll be the biggest kid there. Uh, all right. So Let's play dodgeball. But like uh, signing uh, up let, for these let things. Let me try. Let me try. Oh, oh no. try. So, yeah, so that's going, a good word. Going back to, um, going back to when I was like originally starting. You know, I didn't want to just get fit, although I do want to get fit. And like the sledge really kind of got me excited about the gym because it's different. And I, you know, talking to Josh about I'll say it again, being explosive and being more athletic. Um, so the athletic part of it is fun. Like that Spartan race last week was really hard, but it was fun. It's different. It's not just, you know, picking up weights and putting them down. It's a little more, um, a little more to it than that. Do you think because it's not something that is, um, and maybe linear is not the correct term, but you know, it's something different. It keeps it new. Um, it's another way to push yourself that you wouldn't have pictured before. And it's just to see what you are capable of. Like you're kind of testing what you can do versus hey maybe this isn't for me yeah that's definitely a big part of it also you know when you when they, they say whoever they are but they say you know don't don't try to train for things and then put it on your calendar just put it on your calendar and figure it out yeah um that they collection of people is pretty smart because it really works yeah um so i just did that and then i just keep now doing that <laughs> <laughs> Could you draw a correlation to like, okay, you went high school athletics, you had practices all week, then you had a game. Yeah. Can it relate to be like the exact same thing is that you're training for something that all of a sudden that Spartan race or that run is game day? Yeah. I actually hadn't thought about it, but yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yep. I mean, that's where for my brain goes there. It's like, okay, we have 18 weeks before we have to run a marathon. We'll have 18 weeks of preseason before it's game day or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely that element for sure. Okay. Now, what did the people around you say when you started making these changes? Like you go from, you know, working and and developing your your stores to all of a sudden now you're throwing 5Ks, 10Ks and marathons on the calendar. What were their initial thoughts to you? Like, did they vocalize how they felt or was it kind of just sitting back and watching you go through this change? I think for the most part, people were just kind of sitting back and, and, and seeing um hopefully getting a little bit inspired. I know that got a couple of people to come here. Some stuck, some didn't. So far, my brother's working out, which is a really crazy thing for me. And Talk yeah. about that experience, though, because I think that's... I mean, he called me last night to tell me about the workout, and that's been going on <laughs> for the last two months or so, and that's really that, freaking cool because yeah. it, it adds a whole new dimension to our relationship, which is quite nice. Um, you know, for the, for the longest time lately, it's been family and work. Now we have something fun to actually talk about that's not sports or beer related now what about obviously juggling being a business owner obviously it seems that most don't have a lot of times for themselves so you te that's seem to bullshit. you know yeah. it's bullshit there's time for everything you just got to make it work okay that's one of my biggest struggles is actually trying to navigate the schedule so that you can put yourself first so i, I commend you for doing that um, it's something that i find difficult you shouldn't double book your clients. I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody um, makes mistakes too. No, you know what? It's it's there, there's certain times you have to prioritize your health. I mean, at the end of the day, like I was saying to these guys when I walked in this morning, um, you know, obesity isn't about vanity. You know, looking good is great and shit, but obesity is simply it's death. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, obesity is heart disease. Heart disease is death. So, what do you think time. is your greatest accomplishment so far since in the last? Not even a year. If you had to hang your hat on one accomplishment, what do you think it would be that you're the most proud of? From a physical perspective? Anything. Oh, my kids are the best thing in the world, man. Okay. Nothing touches that. What about from a personal accomplishment? Well, that's that is personal. Was, the Spartan race was badass last week. Okay. No doubt. Looking Running in the it. snow in, in March wasn't? That was. Okay. But this was cooler, for sure. Okay. I think it was freezing out that day. It was. <laughs> That I was cooler in March. <laughs> oh, how do you guys put up with that every day? It's challenging. I look, I, 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 I admire you guys. I do. I do. He's like seven years old. Like he just lost a bunch of years. He used to be twelve. Then he got a cute little haircut. I know. Don't worry. I've already got a bunch of texts today. Really? Being like, Josh just got his haircut. Wow. Oh yeah. Okay. When New he walked the through block. the door yesterday and I saw him, I was like, he was lit from the window. I'm like, oh, look at that baby angel coming in here. <laughs> but you know, what he, I opened up the door today. He goes, voila. Oh, no, it's <laughs> voila. Because <laughs> I figured. Look at my hair. <laughs> 
Because yeah. you're honestly. I'm going to do that every time I get my haircut okay, once. I'll walk in the door and be like, voila. Um, because I guess sometimes to man, a haircut is like the biggest thing ever. So I was I hearing a lot really about it bad. for. I need one really bad. Yeah, you got a Wolverine neck. <laughs> yeah, it was gone. It was going for a while, but Ryan seems to make a huge spectacle about haircuts, mm -hmm. um, I think. So, like, this coming week, um, all group classes, you'll probably hear the announcement probably four or five times. Mentions it to my clients probably two or three times, too. That you were getting your haircut? No, that I got my haircut. Hey, you have to X, just Y, go and Z, with the, did you notice? You have to go at the M&M school and just let everybody know. At, everybody, by the way, I got <laughs> yeah. a haircut, so Ryan doesn't need to explain I it. was going to announce it, actually, on the group class on Friday. Like that, the that's just, that's hey, your safe space, for sure. Do it. Coming through, um, announcement, I'm getting a haircut today. If you could Obviously put it on that TV, waiting. yeah, just stream on that TV. That I should do like perfect. a now and then, like when I kind of like before braces, <laughs> after braces. Days since you know Josh's haircut, yeah. we'll have a counter going on. There we go. Don't worry, I already got next month. Um, next month, it yeah. was five booked. months by the time you got your yeah. haircut last time. Yeah, it was. you already booked it. I already booked it. Okay, he was like, I'll, he put I mean, me I don't in. want us to look professional or anything like that, or or. Yeah, but I think my Thank my you. hair doesn't really reflect. Very much. Mm, mm, mm. All right, but we can go back to my journey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Guys, come back so, to me. So I, I think I think if we're gonna really talk about journeys, um, it really starts when you're a kid. Because I've been obese since I was a kid. So that's something that we all need to really talk about. I know you guys aren't parents yet. You are. Mm -hmm. Your kid is skinny, so that's good. Um, well, no, he, he wasn't always. Like, it, it's only been in the last, like, six months, I'd say, that Logan had his, his first shot of testosterone and is, like, taller than Josh now. But it's like... Most humans are. Yeah. A size, like, 14 <laughs> foot. <laughs> wow. Average male. Um, childhood obesity is real, though. We need to be working on that for our kids because... Childhood obesity, fat kids become fat adults, fat adults die young. So, Well, we're not allowed to use the, the term fat anymore okay? because uh, that's that's shaming. So Should we, we call can, it horizontally challenged? We could call it whatever. Gravity challenged? I, obese? I do. Morbidly obese? You're not allowed to use those terms. Okay. Can I call myself that? You can. Okay. <laughs> you can call so it whatever. So don't be like me <laughs> and have fat kids that wind up as fat adults and then wind up in a gym on a podcast talking about trying to not be fat. Just, I think just make healthy kids. I, I think it's really, really tough to to really posture nutrition in front of kids because like we want to give them the things that taste good. Mm -hmm. Of course. Right. Um, but the things that are good for them their taste isn't going to acquire yet. So I think you have to mask it or just completely well, eliminate it from... You don't have to completely eliminate it, but, like, you know, the 10-year-old isn't going to to price, mark, uh, price shop or to go food shopping. So sure. if it's not in the house, if there's no Doritos in the house, guess what the kid's not eating? Doritos. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot of um, uh, parents that I train, and we start to talk about nutrition. Um, the last and final excuse they always use is, well, my kid's not going to like this. That's it. That's how they say I'm not doing it, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when the kid is hungry, if there's nothing else to eat, that, that's what they're going to eat. So Sarah, so my kids go to Saratoga School. Saratoga is considered, I think, the top healthiest county or city or some shit in New York. Those kids, they give my six-year-old, five-year-old ice cream at 11 o'clock with lunch. Really? Yep. Ice cream. What kid's not going to say yes to the pink ice cream sandwich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the healthiest county in the state, and they're giving the eleven-year-old at eleven o'clock in the morning ice cream. It's the stupidest thing in the universe. We have to pay attention. <laughs> Does he do that? No, no. <laughs> I think his brain went, or mine was. Um, yeah, I think it's tough, but I also think too is like I'll go back to nutrition and then activity. Yeah. You know, like yep. the whole video game thing or putting somebody in front of a TV nonstop. I think that's really tough. And I think society is kind of like, I don't know, adapted to it because it's easier that way. But also in competition sports, losing is now frowned upon, not not learned as like a something to embrace, well, you know? Yes. Consequence in everything is just frowned upon. Yeah. Whether it's sports or whether it's getting in trouble in school or anything, there's, 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 no, there's no negative consequence. So the kids are frustrated to go play sports and try and fail, so then they retract from those activities, and then what do they have to, re, you know, res resent to? I mean, or... Resort, resort to. Resort to, yeah. <clears throat> Video games. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, also, I think 
there are some parents out there, I'm not going to say all, that are so terrified to watch their kid fail that they don't even put them in the position to try. Like, you know, we we all did the 4 by 4 by 48 I was lucky that Logan joined us for the, well, except for Josh, because Josh had to run the business side and classes while we were doing the runs. It was Sunday. <clears throat> it, I was giving him an out, okay? Yeah. I was giving him he an tried, out. I but um, <laughs> Logan joined us for the last run. First time ever, he ran four miles. And I kept telling him the whole time, like, dude, yeah, you, you suck at running, but at least you're out here running. Think of the people that are your age that aren't. And it put things into perspective. I was willing to watch my kid fail at being a good runner just so that he learned the lesson of getting better. There's a lot of parents that coddle their kids. And then I think to go to Chris's thing, they aren't afraid to look at the, the health aspect of their kid. I was well aware for a good number of years that my kid's medications along with probably not the greatest diet at times, were contributing to him being potentially, you know, pre-diabetic as a 10-year-old. Wow. I'm, I'm very blessed that all the family members in my family are giants and I'm not and that he's getting their genes. But it's like there's a lot of parents that won't pull the chips out of the, the cupboard and throw them away. It's like it's easier just to, here you go, whatever makes you feel good. Right, but the problem is, is you're choking out their internal organs and you just don't want to admit the science of it. And then when it becomes a problem at the doctor's office, they, hmm, and uh -huh, yeah, we should have them on a better diet, but I work too much and this is easiest. It's like, okay, thanks for admitting that you're willing to take the easy way out. At some now, I'm not saying all parents, but some yeah. parents do that. I mean, I I think I don't want to stereotype the whole like society thing, but you know, it's calories in, calories out. You it's know, simple. activity, 100%. start moving. You know, Kelly Collins said the best if she's ever listening. You know, just grab a pair of sneakers and go outside. Yeah. Go to a playground. Go run around. You know, but the hard part is, is you know, if a kid goes has a bunch of sugar, runs around, then there's that huge insulin drop where they're gonna. Yeah, that's. I was that's, just watching you stare out. I was thinking about what you were saying. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to chime in on that? I, you didn't finish. I did finish. Period. Chris's period. I think I lost um, no. traction of what you're saying. Okay, traction. all right. Well, because I, you said that before. Like, you know, all you need is a pair of shoes and to go outside to have a workout. Um, I think I was getting lost with the childhood part. Well, you just <laughs> left childhood like a month ago, so thanks for getting lost in it. I'm just trying to listen. Yeah. Chris, I think that brings up a good point. <clears throat> and I think it's a, we don't talk about it enough. Uh, yeah, I agree. So you had said in our conversations last night that you had a couple questions before we wrap this up. For us, what did you have on your mind, sir? All right, let's do it. What... Oh. Uh, 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 I heard you roll your eyes there, buddy. Yeah. Um, heard. For all of you, what's one thing you're doing today to become a, get a better coach? Start with you, Dan. Uh, listening to constructive criticism better and being willing to adapt based on that. Um, you don't know, people don't always like hearing it, but if I'm not willing to, to take the advice that, and utilize it, then how am I improving myself for my clients? Always trying to offer like an extra hand to whether that's help somebody out or just hear somebody out, you know, more of a conversation rather than just a like a, a transaction, you know, when you see them because, you know, it goes outside of these four doors just as much as it takes part inside, mm -hmm. so, you know, to continue building relationships or like that rapport between people. Okay. Um, I think the consistency aspect for me is I always try to read or, or flood my brain with positivity. Yep. Just because if life experiences take over sometimes or you have a good month, bad month financially, um, relationship-wise or whatever, I think if you can remain consistent as far as what you're bringing to the table, your energy. Um, I've learned to be more assertive, not just with myself, but with people and really kind of tell them what I want or what's going to be, in my opinion, the best case scenario for them. Um, but speaking with more confidence to say like, hey, that's not going to get you where you want to go based on the goals that you told me. Right. I don't care how you think it's going to work, but you're actually paying me to give you a service. So I've been not necessarily trying to meet people in the middle anymore. Right. I'm more assertive. Not like if balancing. I went to a doctor, the doctor said you should do this to get better. We have no problem 
saying yes, okay, quick, yeah, I'll do that. Right. But when somebody says like, hey, I really want to lose X amount of weight or do this, and I say, here's the steps that we need to take to do that, and you don't want to meet me there, I know we talk about it all yeah. the time, then I, um, then I become more assertive nice. in my coaching. Okay, I like it. Um, I think I just have one more for you. <clears throat> How has becoming a coach made you a better man? Wow. Uh, I just had the Josh look for a second because I just <laughs> literally had a flood of the last uh, almost two years. I think that surrounding yourself with, okay, you're the, the five people you surround yourself the most with, right? And it's like, I, because of being a coach and because of being in here, I've surrounded myself with what I think are some of the most positive people I've ever had in my life, like period, like between Ryan and Josh and Casey, um, she's not here, but like that has made been able to help me weather personal storms and has helped me because I understand from certain perspectives that like Ryan and I are almost in the same gen are the same generation. So we understand each other, different life experiences. And I'm able to take that <clears throat> into my private life and realize that like the bad stuff isn't always bad. You just have to rely on the people who are around you. And maybe that's been one of my, uh, hardest things is that I rely on myself too much and being able to be open with like those three people, especially on a daily basis has, uh, made me realize like the bigger picture and being a better person is what matters. Nice. Is that like the reel you sent me yesterday? Yes. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to yeah. reference that too. You got it too? Yeah. It's the, I said, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, three, it's, the, three people. it's the three people. It's the uh, three people. It's the three people. I sent it to, I sent it to the, I sent it to three people. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. wasn't, it wasn't in a group thread. So I actually I, felt like I got it on the golf course. I was like, shit. Yeah. I that's, saw that's it at good, first Dan. and I was like, oh, he sent it to me. But I was like, no, but there's three people. So it's just three. <laughs> yeah. But no, like in a good way. Okay. Um, good. Kind of go off of what you said and uh, on the last question um, to be assertive, um, you know, to actually like speak up for myself or kind of like set those boundaries within people, not just letting them kind of always be the ones to take control and like I can actually put my foot down with things um I think that's one of the best things that I've learned you know just self-respect almost in a way I think is the best way to put it but also um the learning like the discipline and the consistency is going to get you way further in life than anything else and obviously like I have these guys around me to you know preach whatever it might be you know be there as a, a shoulder if needed um and yeah that's it Nice, good. I think it's something that you've actually helped me out more with than I've helped myself with. And that's kind of like giving me the confidence to say of things that I don't like as far as standard goes. So if like, hey, I want my, my facility to be here. It's not even financially, but I think like community-wise, energy-wise, my expectations of my bar is super high. So I've been more assertive when it says to these guys, hey, listen, this is what we should have every single day. Hey, why aren't we doing that? And you've given me that, let's call it, go back to when you first walked in, that courage. Because, hey, uncomfortable conversations, especially when you're with your peers and colleagues and your friends, because we do things outside of the gym, um, those are extremely uncomfortable. But you've given me that confidence to go back and say, like, hey, listen, this is your baby. This is your brand their representation of you, your representation of them, if they have stupid haircuts and they're going out in public and they have a gym sweatshirt on, it's not a good look. So I do I do like to emphasize the the cleanliness and how how we look. Professionalism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if there's an announcement <laughs> that you guys want me to put on the Civic Center, I'll do that. Because we can do that. As so if you drive by and a picture of Josh's haircut. Um, Listen, bright white teeth, good smile, sells. Sells, yeah. Sells. So it's I interesting. So, actually, so from your guys' perspective, in the questions that I asked you, one of, one of the fundamental answers really, whether it was spoken or not, was community, yeah. which I think is, is what every person in this place that pays you guys to, to train says that they love about it. So it's kind of cool that you guys feel the same level of community with each other and with your, with your clients. Can you guys also you agree on this too? Is like... We have to bring energy to it, but I think as much as we bring, it gets reciprocated yeah. back mm -hmm. to us. We're like, it's not always about us. And I'll never take credit for, 
hey, establishing a community, we just keep the doors open. Mm -hmm. That's it. it. The people that do it. Mm -hmm. It's not us. Like, we'll never pat ourselves on the back. And that's why it's so awkward for us to, like, accept praise, like, hey, best gym in the area or best trainers or whatever. I think the community of people that we have that are so giving, that are quick to be like, hey, are you okay? You didn't coach the 5 a.m. class and you sat in your office and Josh was doing a great job and you were just kind of sitting back there. People were really concerned about that. Yeah. Um, I was going to say just to kind of shift your words a little bit, but it's like, I know many hands have helped me get where I am. So now I just want to kind of like add my hand in there to help somebody else Perfect. out. So yeah, that's the community part, yeah. but something you guys, I think you've said that you said to him was like, you know, we always talk about like doing hard things and maybe hard things don't have to be like physically, but you know, those uncomfortable conversations, those are still equally as hard for some people too. Well, and it's, you know it's, to it's have hard them. things that 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 are easy for you right so that that's you guys are yeah. fitness people right so when we talk about hard things for you guys it's different than yeah hard things for non i disagree people. i disagree okay running 48 miles with well, no I, preparation was hard for any human being in 11 inches of snow there wasn't 11 inches of snow the whole time, and I only did 16 of them. So. Okay, there was 11 inches when we woke up at one point in time. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't here for that one. Okay. Yeah. But, but and I ju just because it's in our industry and it's our job and our profession, I will say from personal experience, when you're in these four walls, for as long as the three of us are daily, one of the last things that you want to do is work out. I, 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 that makes perfect sense. You know, so I think it's a tough switch to have to be like, okay, now you got to go get yours. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I've always struggled with, spending so much time in one facility or one space. you got to, like, go outside and come back into it. It's like you don't see all those other four walls. And I think that's where I kind of, like, really grown to, like, running because it's mm -hmm. outside of here. Yes. You know? Um, it also gives you, like, quiet time to clear your brain. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> wrapping up the show, what would you say to the person on the couch today, the person that's struggling? Just get up. Just get up. Period. That's it. Period. Just get up. There's nothing else to say. It's it's everybody knows. The guy on the couch, I was the guy on the couch. The guy on the couch knows. He's either gotta get up or she's gotta get up or what not. What did you say to your brother? My brother was a weird scenario. So I just talk about what I've been doing and then I was talking to Dan about trying to create a Spartan training thing behind the car shop and he came to check it out and we were talking and then my brother came over smoking a cigarette BS and and I'm like you should get in the gym and he's like I gotta quit smoking first and all that and all that and then I gave him the they thing and I said don't quit smoking to go to the gym go to the gym and maybe that'll help you to quit smoking and you know Dan's Dan and they kind of got on and so a month or two later and he's still working out and he's calling me at the end of workouts telling me how much he hates it and loves it at the same time and how he's sore and he's hurt and i'll see him at stewart's every once in a while and yeah check in with him and so it's nice because he does he's not a man of many smiles no 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 give him a drink he'll smile <laughs> <laughs> for sure all right josh wrap up the show buddy thank you guys for tuning in thank you chris for coming out again um it was, kind of felt like it was Pulling teeth a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was trying end. to be like you, Josh. Uh, <laughs> there's some personality there. Um, but thank you to those who are tuning in um, to Coaching Over Coffee. Subscribe. In the 518. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We don't have any pieces of paper. Like, like and share. Wait. Like and share. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell your friends. Repost. Um, comment down below or into the comment section, you know, maybe some guests that you might want to hear from, some questions you might want answered, anything that you guys can think of, we will be willing to give back to you. Thank you. Yeah, we do need a... <laughs> we need the, the, the slate, the slate board. <laughs>